Thank you so much, everyone. My name is Sigu Magwa. I got here from Kenya yesterday at night, ran into bed, woke up and finished up the slides. So welcome. I'm here to tell you a little bit about how we built our Elixir Kenya community. Um, a little bit about me, that's my internet face. Oh, the screen, what you see there. That's my internet face. Uh, my name is Sigumagwa, that's my Twitter X handle. I work at Podi and uh, also at ElixaConf Africa. You'll hear more about it later on. Um, what really is a community? Uh, Yes, in programming or in programming languages, we have different communities, and we just say the word community, I belong to this community, I belong to the other community. But um, in African setup, it's a little bit different because we are born in communities. So once in a while while I'm speaking to you, I'll refer to you as to how we do it, or I used to see it being done, or it's currently being done in a community setup somewhere in Africa or exactly where I live, and try to liken that with what we can do in the Elixir community to help people through. So I'll start by defining a community. Um, it's just a group of people who have something in common, uh, common interests, values, goals. Uh, so once you belong to a community, you usually belie believe and feel like that is exactly where you belong, and anything positive or negative said for or against your community, it comes with some feeling inside. And you really want to defend your community in that case. And um, community has existed for quite a long time. Why really do we have communities? Why really do we need uh, communities? Um, this is a question that is usually asked by product managers, right? You say something and they ask you why. You suggest a new feature, they ask you why. So, in this case, uh, our product manager, who is probably you, might be asking, why do we need communities? Um, communities actually determine the success or failure of a language. I don't think a, a language can grow and be successful without any single community. So, starting the community in Kenya, it was, um, it's a very interesting story that I'm going to share with you. So this was an idea that we came across uh, during a Ruby conference in Kenya. So like most of Elixir people, it somehow starts from Ruby. So during that time, I met up with a, new, a few friends of mine. Um, and um, we had heard about the language called Elixir. And they suggested that we can at least create a community and start working with this particular language. So um, in October around 2018, created a WhatsApp group. Uh, we were about five members, and all of us knew each other. So at this point of the community, when you're starting out a community, there are a few things that you will notice. Uh, everyone is excited, and people are just learning. If you call for any meetup, everyone will show up. Because it's a very exciting thing. It's new, and everyone wants to do it. Everyone wants to show up. And somehow, most of the full-time members, not, no one is looking for a job because no one wants to invest time into things they don't know about in the future. So most of us were either working on Ruby, JavaScript, or something else, and we will regularly meet uh, to do this. So we had full-time jobs. Uh, we had a lot of questions. We never really cared. We would ask without wanting to feel like we are foolish uh, during this uh, period. We didn't know whether we were going to get jobs or not, so it was purely a passion thing to be done. And um, we used to do regular meetups uh, to learn. And um, the resources that we would only have was uh, a book, uh, the book by Dev Thomas, and once in a while referring to the documentation. There was also a book by Sasha, uh, Elixir in Action. So we would do both books at the same time. Um, at Past that point, we felt like at least now we know enough. So we've read enough books. We've met enough times. So what really should we do next? 
maybe we can start doing a project in Elixir because the toy projects that we had in the book uh, had a step by step. So we thought about um, what if we could do a project that we think through by ourselves without someone telling us what to do. So we started out a toy project and um, the first consideration that we made when creating this particular project is how can we attract a larger community into this? So our first um, instinct was to go with creating a developer-friendly interface. So we created a wrapper around um, a company's API for sending out SMSs. And we did this because the company really loves developers. And they will tweet and retweet what we are doing. So this helped, helped us get more and more members on board. At this stage, again, uh, fewer members were getting in from uh, the API wrapper that we wrote. Uh, the other company started getting excited about uh, Elixir because it's an SMS uh, module. We would tell them to do this. In, uh, they were using Scala, so we started having conversations about uh, what if you considered Elixir, what if you considered Alan. And um, doing the online tweets started getting more and more people on board uh, to join the group. Uh, this should be about two, three years later, and um, at that point now the skill set for the community now varies. There are those who, who are starting, there are those who already one or two people have a job in Elixir, and they know Elixir can now pay. There are now people who are curious, so we had three stages. There are the curious who maybe Elixir can be, there are those who are now convinced and they're learning, and there are those who are already working. So um, at that point, um, the community also started to build courage and reach out to other senior members of the Elixir community outside our circle. Uh, how really did we manage to keep this alive with people having various and varied um, um, skill set? So I'll, I'll plug in something on the African nature. So some time back when I was growing up, I'm not that old, so it's not a very long time story. There were people who would be walking from one point to another. Um, and the walking was because probably there was no regular transport. It was faster to walk to your point. And um, it was okay and it was normal for you to walk into any house, say hi, you'll be given water, you'll drink some porridge, and you might even sleep over there at night and continue the journey the following day. So I grew up seeing that being done to a lot of people. Uh, no one really thought that you're here to mess up anything. So everyone was welcome at any given time. And this is something that we can do in the Elixir world. And at the point where the community that we had built got to a point where we had varying um, skill set, we actually had to find a way of um, helping people who are on their journey towards being seniors in Elixir. So we started thinking about how really do we provide water to these people? How really can we give them somewhere to sleep as they are in their journey going through? So there are a few things that we do and we try to do to maintain this community. Number one is if someone writes something nice, just you can DM them and just tell them, thank you so much for sharing this. I think it's really helpful for the community and it's really going to help. It's also good to tell people publicly where everyone else is seeing that they've done something nice, that they've said something nice. The inverse is also true. Um, some other thing that I actively do is to coach members on how to give talks. To coach members and to give them the courage that they can speak out um, at any of our events at any of the international events. Um, I was not supposed to be presenting alone, and the member that I was supposed to be presenting with, that would have been our first time doing a presentation in such an audience. So that's a good example of how um, we encourage members to go out there. Uh, when we get to that point, again, a community manager is someone who might now be needed because uh, we need a community guidelines to guide uh, exactly how we should be behaving. We need someone to be constantly uh, checking and organizing events and making sure that they happen. Uh, there's also a schedule for 
office hours where if you want to have a chat about Elixir, just go to the calendar book and we'll have a chat about it. Uh, that happens, uh, for my calendar, it's three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I just open up a 30 minute slot to talk to any member in the community about Elixir. Uh, how long should we keep running this? Because running communities is mentally exhausting, it's time, it takes time, and it, it's a lot of work. So um, the simple answer is just do it long enough. If you check on any established um, languages, then some of them don't need communities. Um, languages who've been there long enough, you can actually learn from inception. You know their jobs, you know you will get resources, and you can do all this without knowing any community member. Elixir, as it is right now, we need communities for people to uh, actually adopt and use it. We need to have the human face to convince you that this is a language that you can use, this is a language being used. So at this point, we still need communities to be built, we still need communities to be grown in Elixir. Again, going back to uh, the story that I was telling you about, uh, part of the things that you can do is you might stop giving water to everyone who comes in and just build a, build a water tank beside the road so they can drink water as they go past. So this is how really to sustain um, people in their journey through Elixir. So quick check on uh, what you've said so far. So from the story that I was telling you and the growth of Elixir Kenya, we have managed so far to do Monday meetups so every Monday we will do meetups. Uh, the meetup that just ended was um, for learning Phoenix Live View, which was being he um, uh, headed by Njoki. Then we do monthly webinars. So every, uh, I told you about the courage that we got to start reaching out to everyone else outside uh, Kenya. So now we are reaching out, Raj, hello. Raj has been one of our speakers, Peter. Rich, he's also been one of our speakers at Elixir Kenya. So every month, just to sustain the momentum of the community, we call on an external person, and sometimes internal, like le next month it's going to be Frank who is internal, to talk to the whole community and uh, just share to, with them what you have. Uh, we, we tried as much as possible to keep the open source projects running so that any new member, uh, experienced members can uh, get in and have something to do. So at this point, again, maybe we need to do something annually. Maybe, maybe not. So we came up with Elixir Safari. Elixir Conf Africa. So we've been doing Elixir Conf Africa every year, ever since um, 2020, uh, somewhere thereof. So we've had it virtually ever since. and. Um, We've been inviting amazing speakers, uh, organizing this for quite a long time. But for next year, we are planning to have it physically in Kenya for the first time. And we are packaging this as a safari event. So you're all welcome to ElixirConf Africa, which is codenamed Elixir Safari. That will be next year. I swear this QR code was supposed to be visible so that you can scan it and uh, let me try do this and see if it's going to work. Will it? So you should be able to reload. I can see the name Africa. Yeah, that's the QR code. So you can uh, scan the QR code and RSVP for the event. I'll give you a second. Awesome. So, as I said before, I was not supposed to be alone. So that is my co-host, Njoki. She was supposed to be here, but again, I am lucky I got a visa. Uh, she hasn't had any response from the German uh, council about whether it's been approved or not. And that is part of the reasons as to why I want to encourage you to come over to talk to the rest of the community. So, um, just a very interesting thing, have a look at that. I took a screenshot of that a few minutes ago, just before this talk, and uh, 
some of this is privilege. You can see the number of flights that, the concentration of flights. This is flight radar 254. Uh, flight, yeah, flight radar 254. 247. So if you have a look at that, it's uh, somehow privilege that uh, some people can move around, some cannot. So we encourage you and we welcome you to Elixir Conf Africa if you can make it next year. Karibu Kenya means welcome to Kenya, and Karibu Elixir Conf Africa, welcome to Elixir Conf Africa 2024. That means thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for that. We probably have two minutes for questions. Otherwise, we would, yeah. Let's go. What's the shortest path? Thank you for presentation, for talk. I'm really amazed uh, by, by how much you give and working with uh, people in general and with community, especially. I've never worked like with community, but I work with people on a daily basis, and I can just imagine that working with community is just to, you know, you give more than probably you receive. So my question would be, what keeps you sane in terms of what motivates you, what you get uh, from that, uh, you know, huge amount of effort. Thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, yes, you get to a point where you start questioning whether this is relevant or not, whether this is valid or not. And um, as you said, most even most members, you'll realize that they're there when they're either looking for a job or they're learning, then they disappear. So sustaining such a community is usually a very hard thing. And um, what I get from it is less financial and more of the fact that I like training. I like teaching people new things. And just getting them from the unknown to the known usually gives me some satisfaction. Um, I've tried actually countering that by hiring a community manager who just, they, they wake up knowing this is my job too under these people. So it's part of their deliverables to make sure that there's engagement, uh, people are there, that the event will be there, the event will happen. So part of that also gives you some sanity. But again, it comes at an expense. Yeah. And With that, we're just in time. So yeah. thank you so much. And feel free to reach out to Sigu after, the, uh, after this as well and ask him more questions. Yeah, thank you. Peter is also one of our very long time friends. He's come to Kisumu and Kenya a lot, a couple of times. Yeah. Next time, uh, next year too. Yeah, next year he's also coming for the conference. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much.